Hi, everybody. Welcome again to the Zoo Podcast. Uh, if you're checking this out live, we are streaming right now on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, you can find the audio version of this podcast on iTunes, on Spotify. Uh, you probably catch little clips of this online on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, everywhere that you can. Please subscribe uh, so that way you're notified every time a new episode comes out. We don't mind a nice review either. That's always fun. Um, we have a great guest this week for you. His name is Mark Nelson. He has a, a campaign running on Zoop right now. It is live. It is called Thunder Hunters. Mark, welcome to the show. Thank you for your time. Well, thank you. And great to be here. And it's great that Zope is willing to take it. I keep mispronouncing <laughs> Zoop or Zope? We don't take it personally, Mark. It's Zoop. Like, like the Los Angeles Zoo or the Bronx okay. Zoo with a P at the end. So Zoop. Zoop. Yes. Okay. Or I'm ordering some Zupa. Okay. Um, Are you um, Italian? <laughs> yeah. No, thanks for you guys taking a chance on me and allowing me to come and, you know, try the crowdfunding with you. So I, I can't, you know. You know I'm what? Mark, I don't think it was taking too much of a chance. We saw the art. You came highly, highly recommended from Scott Dunbeer. That's kind of, you know, all we need. And of course, Mark, I mean, I, has it been a 40 year career or about a 40 year career in, in the world of comics and graphic art? Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, it's weird because yeah, aliens is over 30 years old now. And I just don't think of it being that long ago, you know? So you figure I started probably doing, I think star star slayer and 89, somewhere around in there. And I was working for uh, uh, Dungeons and Dragons and TSR at the same time. So, yeah. So whatever that would be. So you late figured, late eighties. Yeah. The start. Yeah. Okay. So thirty plus thirty five year career. And as you can see in the chat here, Fritzy Schnitzel is saying that Mark Nelson is a major league talent. That's why <laughs> it, w it wasn't really taking much of a chance for us, man. We we, we yeah. knew. Well, thank we, you. Yeah, we knew the talent. We knew that, that the there's an audience out there for you. And clearly there is. We launched uh, maybe eight eight days ago, I believe. You're at mm -hmm. over you just broke thirteen thousand dollars today on a six thousand dollar goal. Um, you're crushing, by the way. Uh, you know, there's a couple of things I want to talk about with the campaign. And actually, okay. Chance, if, if you don't mind bringing up the page, here we go. Just broke thirteen thousand and one hundred and fifty backers all today. Um, but I'd love to hear the story of thunder hunters I, i'm gonna kind of give you a prompt and then i'd okay. love for you to take it from there but it, it it seems like a first person account of your main character and he's the artist that's essentially no. uh ca cataloging and making a uh a, a journal you know with imagery in this crazy world well you got it all see you later <laughs> Um, sold, sold. <laughs> well, it, yeah, you I mean you're hitting the nail right in the head. It's uh, yeah. his name is J.V. Holbrook, and he is going out into Vermilion Sands, which is an uncharted territory. Now, when you think of um, historically, people like James Audubon, who went out and was making all those drawings of animals that no one had seen before, and there's a uh, English painter, and I'll be a son of a gun if his name just dropped out of my head, that came to the Americas in the 1880s and went all across the, the plains and the different areas and was painting all the American Indians and gathering, you know, their stories and their myths. And there's a lot of people that have done that, you know, like uh, Cushman who went out and did, um, took photos. And then he also, you know, wrote books of their myths and collecting things like that. So, I kind of said, let's create, you know, to myself, let's create this world, Vermilion Sands, where there's a museum uh, called the Williamson Godwin Museum. And um, what they've done is they've gathered his art together at this show. And this is the book from that show. And um, so you've got a little bit of um, pinup pages where you, you're seeing some of the royalty, some of the shamans, some of the regular people you meet, and then they were so kind to write it in the intro that there's uh, seven short stories which tell a lot of different things. Like one of them is the myths of how creatures are created. One of them is just a little fishing story with our hero. And they all have different kinds of things. Some of them are a little playful. Some of them are a little bit serious. Um, but that's, you know, I mean, that's like, you know, you get up 
in the morning and it's going to be a great day and you had two sugar cookies and you feel it great and you walk into the bedroom and you know your hamsters run away with the uh, the parakeet and you're all alone so you break down and start crying so that's the way you know human nature is so we have highlights low points everything so i try to get a whole bunch of different ideas of you know what people would believe and it's the research has been so much fun for me too you know reading myths from Africa, Mesoamerica, all these different things. So, yeah, it's it's great. I, I was going to say, how do you research? Because it seems like all fantasy straight from your head, but there's also, it sounds very inspired by actual history. Well, that, you know, that's the one thing, you know, you really, I, and I don't know, I mean, maybe I'm just being um, gullible, but, you know, sometimes you sit down and you look at a day in your life and you just go, if somebody wrote this for a soap opera, nobody would believe it, you know, but you get <laughs> at it, you know what I mean? And and there are those kind of things that, you know, so when you think about, um, you know, the world, every culture has its, um, sometimes, you know, the primitive, I, I hate to use even the word primitive because they are in, within their own ways, you know, they were doing stuff. The Egyptians did stuff with gold work we can't do today. So, sure, um, they all believed in certain things. How the world is created, the flood is something that is in every. It's in uh, Mesoamerica. It's in uh, American Indians. It's obviously in, in Africa. So, I mean, there's that kind of thing. So that you sit down and you say, okay, one of the stories I did is you know. Two, uh, the two gods get together to create new life forms. And it's sort of like their little story, but, you know, the one shows up at the door with a bottle of wine and then you sit down and they start creating animals. So, you know, I mean, it's just like anything else, you know, to, you know, how you form them, what do you do? What are you thinking? So it becomes for those two guys in this myth, it becomes like a little game. And I hate to give it away, but no, no, no spoilers, no spoilers. Okay, no. <laughs> People got to buy the book and find out. Yeah, and and the character, one of the characters that they create in that short story, becomes an important animal character in another story. So okay. in a sense, I try to, okay, you know, it, it's just like anything else. You know, how did the leopard get its spots? You know, or the the whole thing about uh, the robin you know, brought fire to man and burned his breast. And that's why they have a red breast, uh, you know, the red feathers on their, their breast. So, and it's, you know, so for me, I grew up with a lot of this kind of stuff and I just enjoy the living daylights out of it. And um, there are, you know, I mean, again, there are so many people out there. When you look at what I have done, I, I consider myself uh, a little bit of a fringe guy. Okay, you know, worked a lot with the Clive Barker, worked with Joe Lansdale. And when Baron and I did a project at Epic, it was all animals and lizards and dinosaurs, the four communities that get in a war. So I'm always working on stuff that's kind of a little bit on the edge. Sure. And the reason I'm saying that, I don't, I don't you know, is, is that superheroes are wonderful and I enjoy them, but there are so many people out there that would just draw circles around me doing superhero stuff. So it's like, I don't, you know, it's debatable. Yeah. I want to say, you know, like some, when I see a really like Lee weeks and I look at his Batman stuff, yeah, you, know, you just go, Damn it. <laughs> you know? and like, I was just talking with Graham Nolan, you know, I mean, and Graham's another guy I've known for 30 years. Great guy. And, you know, his energy and what he brings to it is great. And when I worked in the video game industry, it was like, okay, uh, you can sit down and do all the main characters and, you know, you know, doing everybody with, the, you know, the, the closely cropped beard and this and that and all the main characters to look good and all that. I'm kind of like, oh, God, give me the guy with the pimple on the end of his nose. Give me the, the dinosaur that drools a little bit more, you know. So, sure. yeah, I've always had that sort of little bit of a eat twist and then off the edge. So Thunder Hunters is, just to give you another idea, is something that I've been working on for myself. 
and it's something that I would do in between a lot of projects. So it's there was no deadlines for me, and I could draw what I want, do what I did, tell the stories I wanted to tell. And, um, you know, pretty soon, like Anita said, that's my wife, the joy of my life. I said, she said, um, what are you going to do with all that crap? You know, <laughs> we're both artists. And, you know, you, as an artist, you always end up having the biggest collection of your own work, you know. And um, as I jokingly said, I would, you know, put it in a portfolio and slide it under the bed. And then pretty soon the bed was doing this. So I had to do something. And, you know, the Thunder Hunter stuff, like I said, is, is very personal. And the other thing that's very personal is that when people go to the, um, the site, and I, I can't believe all those little drawings sold that I posted, which is just fantastic. Thank you, everyone. You know, those are the kind of things I do to relax and just, you know, when I get done with the project, sometimes I just sit down and draw to relax. So, Well, so let, let me just uh, cut in here for a second. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, what, what Mark is talking about, we have that link uh, at the bottom of the, of the screen. It's in the show notes as well. Chance, I think we got to take out the first H, but everything else works. HTTPS zoop.gg slash C slash Thunderhunters. There's a QR code on the screen right now. You can take your phone if you're on your computer. Go check that out. As Mark is saying, there's a bunch of original art. We sold out of a lot on like day one and day two, and we actually refreshed. Mark brought out even more pieces of original <laughs> art for sale now. So if you're a Mark Nelson mm -hmm. fan, you're looking for a piece of original art from the Creature Master, I would have to say. Um, well, thank you. Th this, is, this is your opportunity. Um, and Mark, listening to you talk, it, it sounds like, I mean, do you have, I don't, I don't know if the, if the word is a passion or a hobby for, it sounds like a mixture of history and mythology and lore. Uh, yeah, like, uh, am I hitting that nail on the head or uh, because it, or b like biblical tales, like where, where is this inspiration? Is, that, is it a mixture or uh, tell me like, where does this come from? Because this is not something that I hear a lot about and it's fascinating ah well if you can if you know you look behind me you can see a Couple lot books. of books and i have a lot more books than that but and they're grouped in like you know animal books i have almost 10 feet of dinosaur books um and like the one that you're seeing on my this thumb right here that's all my books on mythology and mesoamerica and things like that um, I have hmm, a lot of animal books. I mean, my wife and I come from that old school of illustration where we didn't have the internet where you could look everything up so easily. So in a lot of cases, um, you know, you, you go to the library and you'd be checking out books and things like that. The internet is just phenomenal for me because, you know, you can sit down, you can type in bird wing and you can get like 50 or 60 different types of bird wings. And, you know, depending whether they're a predator bird, whether they're this, whether they're that, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, you learn so much from doing some of that stuff. The other thing is I did do that Dover book, another shameless plug here, called Creating Your, you know, Your Fantasy World. And that was a lot of fun. And it put my head on about a lot of things, too. But it, it's just like anything else. Right now, we're living through, you know, an interesting historical time. But at the same time, you know, you go back and you look at, I, I think of my grandmother, and this is where part of it comes from, is she grew up riding a horse to school. Wow. She saw World War I, World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War. Um, she saw the invention of, you know, electricity in a sense for the lighting and that, TV, radio, records, DVDs. You know, all this stuff just in her lifetime. And that's pretty amazing, you know? Agreed. No, I, I, I think about that a lot as well. I mean, you know, my my grandmother, oh, man, I lived through a lot of things, too. And it always amazed me, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, that's just a whole other tangent. But it, it, it is fascinating. And But not only is that fascinating, but it's it's amazing that you have that ability to sort of catalog that in your head and then use that to inspire the art that you make. Like I, I just find that as a, as a fascinating um, trait, I guess would, would be the word. It, it's, it really is like something incredible. Um, 
I kind of, I kind of want to touch on, you know, like your entire history. I mean, do I have it correct that like, I mean, you, you've worked as a teacher, you've worked, mm -hmm. you've done video games, you've worked in, in the role playing game industry. Um, you know, uh, essentially you've been an artist for a very long time across multiple industries. How do, how do you kind of find, you know, what, what do you like the best? What, what, what isn't so great for you? And you don't, you don't have to name any names, but like, what, what's your preference really? Well, I mean, the whole thing is, is I, I kind of look at art as a little bit of a challenge. You're developing your skills and your abilities. And I've been very lucky that, you know, as a teacher, I was doing more of the gallery stuff and I came in as a printmaker. And so my degrees are in printmaking. So, you know, if you want to talk about the Renaissance printmakers, contemporary printmakers, I can bore you to death. <laughs> um, but, you know, what happened was, is they, they slid me into an illustration class because I'm also, you know, very much a traditional draftsman and I taught a lot of basic drawing courses and figure drawing and all that. And when I got into illustration, I said, you know, if I'm going to be teaching illustration, <clears throat> I should be doing something with that. You know what I mean? So in other words, uh, the, the great line at the university at times, which made my hair frost was, you know, you don't have to do what you teach. Well, if I'm teaching illustration, I need to know what rates are, what different things, how to be a business. And when we got the program going, we had all our students, you know, build a portfolio. We had a class where they learned about taxes and what they needed to do, the business of being an illustrator. So we tried to be really, 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 uh, you know, functional about a lot of this stuff. So that trained me a lot into doing, you know, different things. And the thing is, is when you're dealing with the classroom, you know, no two students are alike. And that's where I think the administration and a lot of people get it wrong because you have students that intellectually pick up stuff very quickly and do things. And you have other people that develop at a slower rate. And I always used to say, I'd rather have a C student that works really hard because I know in the course of the two or three years that I'm working with them, they're going to get really good than an A student who doesn't push himself or herself, you know? Sure. So you've got, so that is something that, you know, and then that, that affected me because I have to think about different things, how different people solve a problem, how different problems can be presented. And that goes back to some of the way I was taught too. And I was taught by some really good people and they were really saying, you know, it's, it's you, you know, you have to challenge yourself. You have to go, so the thing is, is that going into illustration for me was actually not that big a jump because I'm a figurative person, but it led to a whole new world of, of discovering stuff from inking to penciling to what the comic book format and the layout and all that was, which was kind of exciting. So, and then at the same time, I was contacted by uh, Dungeons and Dragons TSR before they you know, were bought by Watsy. And I ended up starting to do a lot of stuff with them, the black and white interiors for game modules and books. And that led me into a whole nother realm of thinking and doing things. So I've been, you know, for all intents and purposes, pretty darn lucky. I would, I would say if you're consistently working for, you know, over three decades, that's it's a little bit of luck, but I'm sure a lot of skill and interpersonal, you know, relationships as well. Well, I, I always tell people that as an artist, you need to be adaptable. You know what I mean? Because um, I remember when the computer came into the classroom <clears throat> and it was a big split in the area I was in, which was the fine arts, and half of them were saying, that's it, the computer's just a flash in the pan, it'll be dead. <laughs> you know, wow. Right. I mean, now you look at how, I mean, I went, in, in all honesty, and I was hired at a software gaming company, and I had no computer experience. And the people that hired me looked at me and said, look, the reason we hired you is for your ideas, your concepts, your ability to draw. We can teach you survival Photoshop in two weeks, but we can't teach you how to draw. So do you, do you also work in Photoshop nowadays or not really? I work in, yeah, I work, I, you know, even when I was at the gaming company, I was working in, um, 3ds max and i worked in in lightwave for a while too i mean it was nice because it was a small company and there was at that time when i first got there about 30 of us so you got to do a lot of different things you know so 
I got to design the creatures, the model makers built them. Then the skins were, you know, uh, you know, they would unwrap the model and then we'd paint those and put them on. So I've done a little bit of everything. And that was really fantastic for me because it just, it keeps you learning and it keeps you growing and trying things. So I have Absolutely. to admit it's the company has gotten so big that everybody can fit into this specific hole, you know, and the problem with that, like with most gaming companies, like people would say, well, I just want to work at the gaming companies and design all the big monsters. And you go, well, those big bosses, there's only eight of them. And, you know, even if you got a, a month to do, you know, uh, uh, four of them, that's four months. What are you going to do for the other two years? The game is in production. Sure. So, I mean, you know, I, like I said, I've done everything from building low poly models, which nowadays, you know, a low poly model would be something that we would have went, woohoo, you know, we, we can actually use more than six polys, you know? So, I mean, again, but then that's the whole thing too, because you think about coloring, um, we started in gaming when I was there with a 256 palette, which is what early comics are. Now with Photoshop, we have millions of colors. Sure. And with, uh, you know, with, God, what they can build with the models now with millions of polys to create incredible stuff for films and movies and, and games too. It's amazing. It, it is amazing yeah. what they do nowadays. Um, I do kind of want to steer you back a little bit to comics. Um, yeah. What, who, I guess, maybe were your artistic influences in the world of comics? Well, the strange thing is, is not strange thing. I grew up at a time when, you know, I read a lot of the Jack Kirby, Steve Ditko, Don Heck, all their monster comics, you know? I, okay, I, yeah. Things, Strange Tales, you know, all that stuff. And I really do enjoy, the, you know, Fantastic Four. I enjoy the superhero stuff, but my heart is with the beasties and the monsters. And the one crew that really set me off when I was in undergraduate school was the underground people with Slow Death and... You know, people like Richard Corbin um, sure. that came in and Joe Jackson. And um, there's just a whole bunch of those guys. And at the same time, Warren was coming out with Creepy and Eerie magazine. So a lot of these EC guys like Al Williams and Angela Torres and all those people were getting work at Warren. Neil Adams was doing some beautiful stuff. There was just Russ Heath. There was just so much great black and white art or art that I thought that was really exciting for me. So that stuff sort of pushed all my buttons to try some different kinds of things. And what happened was, is I was outside Chicago area teaching in DeKalb, uh, Illinois at Northern Illinois university. And I started looking around at the small independent companies and there was a little local comic book company called just imagine comics. And I sent them some stuff and they said, sure, let's, let's look at it. And we developed a friendship. I did a whole bunch of artwork for them. I go back and look at it now and I go, <laughs> of course. But that also then led to me meeting Hillary Barta at a con. And um, he was doing work at First Comics. And I went in and talked with Joe Staten, who was the art director at that time. And Joe is also another historical figure, I think, in the comic book industry. And he trusted me, gave me a job, and I worked really hard on that. And then working at First Comics, I got connections to other comics and people saw my work. And that was kind of a fun thing. And luckily, I got to ink Joe in a Huntress comic. And uh, he is really a brilliant storyteller, I have to admit. That's awesome. I'm 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 sorry to latch on to this, but do you still have any of those old comics that you were just mentioning, or or were they just a throwaway kind of thing back in the day? Well, we did kind of you know beat them up a lot more because you know again it wasn't I, I didn't really have a comic book store until I was in graduate school in the late seventies, you know. So it was the spinner rack, and if you guys know what those old metal spinner racks are. All the comics have that bend at that one point where the beep to see, sure. what, to see what was in there and everything. So um, I, I used to have a lot of my old comics. I'm sorry I had to get rid of some, you know, because because they really, to me, it's it's not the money 
but I mean, it was the money at the time I had to sell them because we needed the money. Cause you know, financially the world has been going up and down like a roller coaster. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I, I love that. I just love that stuff. I love, I was talking with Graham about that. The, the old smell of the newsprint and the way the color sits in and all that kind of stuff. But then on the other hand, you know, I mean, we've got all these incredible, beautiful, you know, especially from the European market, these beautiful hardcovers that are printed so gorgeously and just rich stuff. So I, I, it's just like six and one half dozen of the other. It's like you can go into sure. the room and you can go, oh, boy, I can, you know, I can pull out old, you know, Bluto or, you know, like, you know, Groot, you know, which was a tree yeah, mark yeah. way back when. And then I can turn around and I can, you know, get, uh, you know, an, a beautiful Russ Manning Tarzan reproduction in IDW or go get, you know, Ralph Meyer's new Undertaker or, you know, there's just an incredible wealth of comics and things. Hmm? Or, or Mark Nelson's Thunder Hunters. If we're talking about beautiful hardcover editions, that's exactly what this is going to be. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the nice segue. Yeah. I have, I have to remember because Graham yelled at me. He says, you have to sell, sell. Yeah, you got, know, gotta promote. I, I'm always talking about other people, but yeah, no, Thunder Hunters is it's a hundred percent me. I have way too much fun with it, and like I said, I've got enough for a second hundred page book without breaking a sweat, almost done. And you know, I've got other stories started and things like that because I'm just a notorious doodler, sketcher, drawer. Um, you know, that's what I do, you know, I mean, yeah. And you people, know. you have an opportunity to, to, again, get some of that original art, some of those original Mark Nelson pieces. They're on the site, zoop.gg slash C slash Thunder Hunters. Uh, the link, or there's a QR code on the screen. The link is in the show notes. If you're listening to the audio version of this as well, uh, get the book. I think we may have some remark opportunities still available. If they haven't all sold out, uh, get signed copies as well. Some uh, original art again. I mean, you don't want to miss out on, on this opportunity. Um, well, Mark, I, I will, I will jump in there because yeah. a friend of mine actually yelled at me. He said, you're charging too little for your originals. <laughs> and I'm like, mm. you know, I mean, again, it's that whole thing, you know I mean? It's nice that people like that stuff. It's nice that I get to draw it. And it's, it's wonderful that people are willing to, you know, spend their money on it and on the book, you know I mean? That's, that's, I've always been, you know, like anybody that comes up with an alien comic book and then I always sign it. They say, well, how much? I go, nope. Because, you know, those books and some of those comics that I've done have given me the ability to keep making my art and doing these things. And I have to respect uh, the fans, you know, and I appreciate them for what they, you know, they're spending their hard own dough, you know, on Understood. that this old monster has drawn. <laughs> In all honesty, yeah, if you go down and scroll down the whole Zope thing, they have a whole bunch of the pages there in a nice big size, and you can check out some of the drawings and, and the detail work that I put in and just all my sort of uh, fun uh, anal retentiveness. No, the pieces are amazing, Mark. They, they really are. We're proud to have yeah. them on the page. Um, and. Thank you. Just because you mentioned having another hundred pager in your in your back pocket, we look forward to doing this with you again in the future. Um, <laughs> but before we let you go, just a couple of rapid fire questions. Um, sure. First one being, who would be your dream collaborator? Whether that's you know a writer, another artist that you might ink over or do a jam mm -hmm. piece with. But in in the world of comics, who who would be a dream collaborator for you, alive or dead? The, the one thing that I always say about that, that I always I always say when people ask me that stuff, I always go sort of asking a mother, what's, you know, who's your favorite child? <laughs> there, are, there are so many brilliant, brilliant people out there. Um, one of the guys that I really enjoy his work and what he's done with a lot of people in France is uh, Oliver Vatine, and he's done a lot of great stuff with other people. That would be kind of fun. I, I've, I got, I was lucky to meet Al Williamson. You know, he's another guy who's a guy, the person that we were going to work on something was Archie Goodwin, but the gentleman got sick and passed away. And that was sad because he's someone that, uh, really I've read 
so much of his work and I, and I, and I love it from the creepies, the eeries, the blazing combats, the Batman stories, you know, so he was, he was good. There are so many, and I mean, I can't, I can't say that, you know, working with Ver Hayden again would not be fun. Cause I know it would be, cause I know that we hit it off and we do good. Um, God, there's, I mean, if I sit here and think too long. Uh, just, that was already like four or five. You don't really have to go much deeper into the well. There's yeah. some, some amazing answers. And I don't want to insult anybody because there's so many. I, and I've had my luck of inking some of the best people, I think, in the comic book industry. So, God, I've just, you know. The thing is, it, if you do keep going, that's when you start offending people. Because you'll get like 50 down the list and they'll be like, hey, come on, man. I'm not even in the top 50. So we'll cut it off <laughs> with those <laughs> with those right there. Um, well, see, I'd be safe to just list dead people then. There yeah. you go, too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really want to work with William Shakespeare, you know, <laughs> kind of a thing. Um, and then final question is, what is your desert island run? Like, if, if you were stuck on a desert island, you had one book or series to keep you company, what would it be? Wow. <laughs> wow. See, because you're talking someone that's such an avarice reader. And the thing that I would say that I don't do, and it's bad, I try not to go back and reread stuff because like, you know, I read the Tarzan stuff, which I enjoyed. I read Carson of Venus, which I loved. And I went back and tried to reread it. But historically now, since, you know, I mean, again, we're different than 1912. Sure. It's a little harder to get into, but then there's other writers that I've read everything, you know, like JG Ballard. I, I'm a big Michael Moorcock fan. Uh, CJ Sherry has written a lot of really good stuff. Um, I can, again, it's one of those things I can list names. <laughs> it would be really hard because I think the biggest thing that I probably would do is I'd want to take a big giant animal encyclopedia so I could read up, you know, mating habits of uh, <laughs> snails or something. What about comics? Is there a top comic for you of all time? I, you know, hard. again, I've got all the underground stuff, you know, Corbin, Chrome, uh, Yellow Dog, I'm trying, Greg Irons, Joe Jackson. I love all those guys. I love Kirby. I love, I mean, the Spider Man, Ditko's Spider Man is great. Doctor Strange is I've been a favorite. Steranko, you know, I just remember how he just blew everybody out of the water. All the early Neil Adams stuff from X Men 2 was just, you know, great stuff. You know, the John Basima, the Conan stuff, uh, Nestor Redondo is... You're, you're, you're a fan of it all, it sounds like. It's Well, there's just so many good people out there. <laughs> you know, I mean, I've had this argument with so many people in the fine arts, too. They go, well, who's your favorite artist ever? And I always say, well, it depends on what mood I'm in. It's just like movies to me. And when they say, well, what's your favorite movie? I go, what genre? You know yeah. what I mean? Because, you know, you look at all the genres you have from Westerns to crime to action to science fiction to fantasy to horror, you know, and there's just a lot of good stuff in all those genres. So I'm never, how do I want to say it, bored? Because if I get tired of reading some science fiction or some fantasy, I've, I've got mysteries. And if I get tired of the mysteries, I can go and read, you know, myths and folklore. And if I get tired of all that... I break out some of my science books, which 90% of it is, boom, you know, over here. But I can still get through some of it. Um, are you going to be at any other conventions coming up? I know you just mentioned being at, you know, South Carolina Comic Con. Do you have anything else yeah. planned for the year? I'm going to uh, Windy City Pulp Con, to, uh, leaving tomorrow. Okay. But um, that's, a, that's a convention that is all old pulps and... Oh man, there's, I mean, there, there, you need to look up Virgil Finley <laughs> and Ed Cartier who drew the shadow. And actually the interesting thing about that is Ed Cartier's illustrations for the shadow were very influential on Jack Kirby. I just read that in a little thing about Jack Kirby. Interesting. So yeah. I've got this whole thing where my father is also an artist. And when I was growing up, he turned me on to, Flash Gordon, and I was never a big fan of Buck Rogers. That was his big thing. Buck Rogers and Prince Valiant. 
you know, and then you see how all these guys have affected everybody else and everybody sure. else and everybody else. So it's kind of been fun for me to just watch mm, all these different artists that have, you know, infected uh, other artists. And I don't want to say that anything is better or worse because I'm a huge Von Bodie fan, you know, and his stuff is very simple and very cartoony. I love Alex Toth. I love Manola. You sure. guys all do the stuff I cannot do, and I am just amazed at what they do. So, and you do, and you do stuff that they can't do as well. Um, <laughs> Mark, what, where are you on social media? Online? Can people find you? You have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, anything like that? Well, if my algorithms aren't destroyed by all this. Um, <laughs> Actually, if they grazing dinosaur press, and if they go to YouTube on grazing dinosaur press, I have a whole bunch of drawing tutorials up there that you Excellent. can see. Uh, Facebook, I have the Mark A. Nelson page, and I have grazing dinosaur press also. On Instagram, I'm grazing dinosaur press. That's me, and I'm trying to think of what other stuff. I mean, you know, if, if I kept track of all the social medias here, I would never draw again. You know, it's like this thing, which is interesting. I had to go through the, the same thing with your thing that I'm on Chrome for my browser. It won't let my uh, microphone or camera come in. So I had to go back to Firefox and uh, yeah, 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 yeah. to be able to talk to you and talk to the other people that I've been doing some of the podcasts with. I apologize for making it difficult for you. No, you're, not <laughs> making, you're not making it difficult at all. You're working with a platform. And the problem is, is that all the other platforms don't want to play friendly with each other. Understood on that. Um, it's not your fault. If I have one tip for you, it's make all of your social media accounts the same name. And then that's just what it is across all of yeah. them. So well, I mean, makes, you, it, you, makes it easy. Grazing, grazing, grazing Dinosaur press. press. Yeah, and people say, well, I just say, just think of a little triceratops grazing along. And then he runs into an old printing press because I'm a printmaker. So there you go. So grazing dinosaur press. There it is. And uh, for everyone, again, thank you for tuning into this. Check out Mark online, grazing dinosaur press. The campaign is live. Go get the book, go get some original art. There's the QR code. If you're watching right now, thank you, Fritzy schnitzel for, for chiming in and, and listening and watching uh, again on Spotify, on you, on uh, iTunes, also on YouTube, Facebook, mm -hmm. Check out the campaign, zoop.gg slash C slash Thunderhunters. Go support Mark. We all appreciate you. And yes. Mark, thank you. Really, pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for your time tonight. And let's keep going on this campaign. Man. That's what, you know, that's what we're both doing. That's why, you know, we're doing this one here at Zope. And I've been done a couple more. Got more lined up. Got to get the word out and that. And, you know, that Fr Fritzy Schitzel is, is going to buy 47 copies of each <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Schnitzel. Um, but yeah. yes, no, it's been fun, and it's good to good to meet you. You know, I mean, it's just amazing to me. I think about it because my wife has that little Apple Watch, you know, and I'm thinking that's like Dick Tracy, you know, when I was growing up. And Look we're there, art, you know, life imitates art. All, all this, all the innovations that came out of Star Trek, we're kind of seeing now. You know, the iPad was essentially mm -hmm. from Star Trek. You know. Oh, Sliding open doors from Star Trek. So, yeah, it, <laughs> it's, but it's true. It's mm -hmm. true. So, it's pretty crazy the things that, you know, things that come from, from art. So, thank you to people like you. We have fun things like Apple Watches. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean it's a whole thing because, you know, you look at it and you got all these science fiction writers that were writing the death ray and they create the laser, which is a death ray, you know. And it is amazing when you talk to some of the scientists and they'll say, my influence for these writers or things like that and to see what would happen. And it is. It's, we're living in, in this amazing time of, of incredible discoveries. I mean, just the surgeries we can do now with the micro, <laughs> you know, replacing tendons and things and just two little, three little puncture holes and that's it, you know, whereas before they practically open you up from stem to stern and have to go in anyway well not yeah not quite as impressive but technology is what's brought us together today as well mark yes. so th th there is that as well 
And again, thank you so much for your time, for being so generous with it. Uh, again, people watching, listening, zoop.gg slash C slash Thunder Hunters. Go get it. Mark, thank you so much. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> Chance, take us out, man.